Yo, what is going on, Tank Clan? It is your boy King Tynex here, back with another video. And before we even get started with the video, I would just like to say, um, go join the Discord. The link will be in the description below because you guys can suggest more what if ideas. And like right now, just spam like a bunch of what if ideas that you have in mind in the comments below because I might actually do some of them. But beyond that, like also sub to. Um, Purple Heart Neptune because it actually helped me with um, creating this storyline. So yeah, roll that intro. In the whipping, I'm whipping the solari. Chin the tone when I'm facing like Pilates. Why you front? You act like you somebody. Keep a trail in the veil, how I go by. I was stuck in the rut, I was nobody. I've been looking for something to go body. There's an art to the hustle, like yo, got it. Kick out a kid back and hit like a new shot. In the whipping, I'm whipping the solari. Chin the tone when I'm So here's how things would have ended up going in this story of uh, what if Deku had a uh, lightning quirk. Azuku would have pretty much had a similar sort of childhood up until the age of 4 where he, well, on his 4th birthday accidentally fried the remote. He had literally just picked it up and all of a sudden it started spiking for whatever, for whatever reason. Inko would see this and look at the remote, realize that there was nothing wrong with the remote before. And today was also Azuku's fourth birthday. It might have been a stretch, but she decided to take Azuku to the quirk doctor in order to see if he had awakened his quirk yet. Azuku would end up finding out that, yeah, he actually did have a quirk. And according to the, doc to the doctor, it was a potentially strong one at that. He apparently had a lightning quake, but, well, at his current strength, it was essentially the equivalent to a weak taser. Azuku would pretty much ask if he could become a hero, though. That's what Azuku really wanted to know at the end of the day. Could he become a hero with this quake? The doctor would simply just give Azuku a thumbs up, basically meaning to say that yeah, go ahead kid, you can try and just get stronger basically. Ujiko, honestly, he wouldn't really even be all that interested in the quirk since it didn't seem like something that was all that strong in the very beginning. Like sure, he could probably uh, grow and have the quake grows alongside him, but that wasn't what his master was really interested in doing right now. So Ujiko just let them go on about their day, really. Azuku would just show the other kids his quake, and Bakugo would end up becoming jealous with it, with the attention Azuku was getting. Bakugo went walk up to Azuku one day and basically challenge Azuku to a fight, see who was stronger, who had the stronger quirk essentially. The thing here is that Bakugo he had the weaker element you could say. Azuku's quirk and Azuku's quirk it was basically lightning after all. Bakugo had explosions, but well, Bakugo was pretty much a natural when it came on to fighting. Azuku would have lost this fight, and Bakugo would have seen this as just another thing to boost his ego. He was hoping that this would actually put Daku down um, a pedestal or so. Basically bring down Izuku's hopes of becoming strong so that Bakugo could feel better about himself But the reverse would have actually ended up happening Azuku would have been encouraged to become even stronger now Azuku would have seen Bakugo as a rival of the sorts He would want to basically try and train his quirk to where he would be able to actually defeat Bakugo in a fight or at least or at least be able to put them into a hand a handstill a standstill I mean to say 
And of course, over the years, Suzuku would just train his, his quake. He would train his body alongside his quake. Azuku would find out a couple of things though throughout these 10 years of training. He would have found out that he could actually increase the strength of his, well, of his lightning, but the issue was, well, whenever he used too much of his lightning, whenever he increased the voltage. He also had pretty good versatility when it came on to his quirk too. The main issue was Azuku's stamina and whenever he went over his limit. When he was approaching his limit, sure, it wouldn't be too bad. It would just be that he would start to lose stamina. Basically, he would be losing energy, you could say. Azuku wouldn't be able to handle those sort of conditions. Whenever he pushed his body to the absolute limit, and then something else would end up happening, which I will describe later on. Azuku would have remembered being worn out after just a couple of uses. I was lightning quick when he was younger, but by the time Azuku was like 14 years old, he would have realized that, well, he could actually go like for about an hour. Um, be basically, Azuku could go an hour long using this quake without really having to worry about um, reaching to his limit, you could say. Basically, it goes like this Azuku can go for an hour using this quake so long as he isn't reckless with using it. If he controls the output a decent amount, then he can continue using this quake for, for as long as he really needs. The weaker the output, the longer he can use it for. The stronger the output, the less time that he can use it for. The medium amount would be that he could use would be that he could use it for an hour straight. So long as it's in that medium, that median amount, you could say. That's enough explaining. Azuku would end up finding it finding it pretty easy to channel his quake through different sorts of metals. Bakugo would see Azuku training and realize that this kid was actually starting to close the gap between himself and well Yeah. Basically Azuku was getting way too close to closing the gap. So in return Bakugo would have ended up training even harder than Cannon in order to make sure that he could actually keep up, keep up the gap between himself and Azuku. Azuku would notice this and train even harder as well. And it would just keep on going back and forth, really. <laughs> Azuku would train harder every time he saw Bakugo training harder than him. And Bakugo would train harder than Azuku every time. He noticed Azuku training harder than him. They would basically feed off of each other's rivalry. Azuku would end up winning some of their fights in Bakugo other times as well. Bakugo would grow to begrudgingly respect Azuku's strength and see him as not complete, completely useless here. He would have seen that Azuku was a cut above the rest of the class, a cut above the rest of the school, you could say. But it wasn't necessarily that he saw Azuku as like some sort of stepping stone like the others, or a wall that he was trying to overcome. No, it's it's going to be a pretty bizarre analogy, in all honesty. It would have been like a log on water. Bakugo was standing on. Sometimes Bakugo would be able to keep his balance and other times Bakugo would end up falling over because of the fact that the water is constantly moving, the log is going up and down all the time and well Bakugo has to be careful most of the time, most of the time because he will never know when the log will actually do him dirty whenever the log actually gets ahead of him or something along those lines you get the point 
Now, by the time they are 14 years old, one of the very first things that happens in the anime is the teacher mentioning how Zuku seems to also want to go to UA. Bakugo at the time was basically boasting about how he was going to be one of um, the only students here to actually make it into UA and actually go on to become a rich and successful hero like All Might and Endeavor. The teacher would mention Azuku and Bakugo, he would just tisk. Many students preferred Azuku over Bakugo because of his more friendly sort of personality although Azuku could be cocky at times. Then when, it came, when it came on to the sludge villain, Azuku would simply electrocute them causing them to actually fall unconscious here. Azuku would just make his way home afterwards. Azuku would just go on to train for around 10 months. He would be pushing the limit of his quirk to an even higher degree than before. He would make sure that his body would, would be pushing the absolute limits of his quirk until it literally ended up shutting down on him. Every time he push, every time he, every time he pushed it to the absolute limit, and he basically exhausted his body, his quirk, it would shut down. He would be paralyzed for a good 20 minutes. It would not necessarily be the same as how it is for a well, um, Kamanari. By the time the UA entrance exams happens, Azuku would have ended up dying to say a blue just for the sake of it really since he thought it would be kind of cool to uh, show that he had some growth from here and plus he just seemed to like the color blue here Azuku wouldn't, wouldn't be such a jittery mess as he was in canon and he would just go on to do pretty well in the written exam. The physical exam would just be a piece of cake for Azuku since he would short circuit most of the robots. Azuku wouldn't be able to save Ochako Ocho Ocho here but he but he wouldn't really have to worry because of the fact that um, the zero pointer would actually shut off as soon as it would reach too close to the gravity girl. Azuku would make it into UA and he would he would basically just do above average here when it comes on to the quick assessment test. Since when it comes on to his quick, it didn't necessarily enhance his physical ability abilities like others who may have who may have super strength for example. At best Azuku would be able to do pretty decent and and like the long jump and well all right so the long jump um when it comes on to the 50 meter dash let's just say no nah, nah he he doesn't really do all that well in the 50 meter dash but when it comes on to that grip strength test Basically, Azuku would just electrocute the thing and say, Hey, teach, this is my score. Maxed out. <laughs> That's basically how it would have went and Aizawa would have just written that down. Although he knew that it wasn't really that Azuku had that great tower grip strength. He just knew that he used this quick in order to gain the advantage here. So... Azuku would finish around like maybe like 10th to like 12th place and Manetta would not actually be expelled here because Manetta actually showed some potential with um with the sign to some with the sign to side jump test basically and you know when he act actually ended up well creating like these massive spheres made up of smaller spheres because I, because I refuse to call it by the other name. Yeah. Azuku would pretty much just be relieved at the fact that he was able to avoid, avoid reaching last place. 
and pretty much from there it would just be the end of the first day people would be a bit traumatized from the fact that Azawa basically tried lying to them in order to in order to get them to do their very best and they would be wondering what their very next day would be like a couple days later they would find out that All Might is actually teaching the hero combat training class and the very first thing that ends up happening is a whole catastrophe because of the fact that All Might ended up making the mistake of having Azuku paired up against Bakugo, even if it was at random. Azuku would wear a costume similar to that of, well, Static himself, the guy you literally see in the thumbnail. <laughs> Although Azuku would just have a little difference here. The difference here is that he would have electric circuits around his arms to help him manage the output of his quake more and amplify the strength for whenever it was really required. Azuku would have taken some inspiration from the hero Electo plant in that, circum in that circumstance. Azuku would go on to be paired up with Ochako against Bakugo and, I and Ida. Azuku would just crack his knuckles and realize that it was going to be like one of the best fights here already. Azuku would try his hardest in order to fight Bakugo. And Bakugo would basically be given the same sort of energy, really. They would be fighting each other until Bakugo would have just had enough and tried to use his, well, his gauntlet. Basically use the second feature of his gauntlet in order to basically finish off Azuku. Azuku would have ended up being forced to actually electrocute Bakugo here. He would have noticed that Bakugo was actually sweating quite profusely and he would have act actually accidentally really electrocute the boy as well. During this whole fight, Azuku was basically trying to avoid using his lightning as much. Mainly to just gain mainly to just gain ground against Bakugo without actually having it touch Bakugo himself. Considering it would have been a bit of a low blow really. But when it came on to when it came on to the last fight, Azuku wouldn't have ended up accidentally shooting some lightning at Bakugo. Bakugo would have been struck by this lightning and, and electrocuted, but during this time he had already released, released a pin on his gauntlet, sending a large explosion towards Deku's way, or Azuku's way since he would not have the name Deku here. Azuku would try, his, would try his hardest in order to actually dodge the attack, but the best he could actually do was get most of his body out of the way. His right arm would have been scorched though. Azuku and Bakugo would have both been unconscious by the end of it. Ochako would end up losing to Ida and the villains would actually win in this scenario. Todoroki's display would have been more impressive though, since he actually froze an entire building and he would end up getting elected class from the next day. Ida is vice rep. The, of course, there would be an alarm that would go off informing students of there being a break in and entering, causing causing several of them to panic. Ida would actually be the one to calm everyone down, just like in canon, really. Kaminari would basically be on the bus ride, looking at, looking at Izuku in a weird way. Uh, eventually, he would gather up the guts to actually ask Azuku for a favor. Basically, he had noticed how Azuku was able to use his quirk so well against Bakugo in their fight. And from the looks of it, Azuku had, uh, had an electricity based quirk as well. He was wondering if Azuku could have actually given him any pointers. Izuku would agree and say to meet him at his place like one of these days he could probably give him a couple 
a couple of lessons on how to use this quirk more effectively in battle and maybe use some support equipment as well in order to actually get a better aim with this quirk as well so that it wouldn't end up affecting his allies in the long run. Kaminari would accept this agreement and, and they would shake on it. Of course when they finally make it to the USJ there would be a bit of an issue. Kirishima would actually point out the fact that it seemed that the uh, USJ was able to bring in some fake villains. It really seemed like UA had everything. But the teacher Aizawa would be confused and actually look around only to see what they would only to see what they were talking about and realize that no. These were not big villains. No, th these th these were real villains. Azuku and the rest would be told to get out of here, but um, your boy Kurigiri basically had different intentions here. Azuku and most of the gang would end up getting teleported to different um, locations, with Azuku ending ending up doing one of the biggest mistakes here. Kurigiri would end up sending Azuku to the Flood Zone, which would have been a serious mistake because of the fact that Azuku has a lightning quirk. And as soon as Azuku hit the, hit the water, it was like that. Literally, as soon as he hit the water, it was basically every man for himself because of the fact that every villain that was in the water they ended up getting electrocuted. They would have sank. They would have. They would have been paralyzed at the very least. And that's just. That's just if they were lucky. Some of them would have died. Some of them, their hearts would have just stopped beating right then and there. Azuku would have seen the true power his quirk really had if he ever let himself go loose. Although most of the time. Azuku would end up being paralyzed. This was one of those rare circumstances where it was just because of the fact that the water would have amplified the strength of the quirk, essentially spreading it all across, all across the lake. And when it hit the boat, that's when, well, me, Maneta and Suyu, who were on the boat at that time. They would have ended up getting launched into the air. They would have ended up crashing onto the shore. Seriously injured. Azuku would have been grabbing onto the boat as well during this time. He was trying to climb up. But he would have been launched into the air as well. Thanks to this, they would have all ended up being seriously injured. But it would have been better to be seriously injured than straight up dead because of these villains. At least they had a chance at survival here, and Azuku was going in and out of consciousness here. The last thing Azuku would see was was the doors was basically this. The doors braced it braced it open, and he would see a muscular figure. It was All Might, but there was something wrong. He wasn't smiling. And that is how I end part one, people. I'm really hoping this does well because um the last couple of uh, of MHA related what ifs they have been doing pretty terrible. So yeah, it is your boy King Tyrion X signing out. You guys already know you guys already know the deal. Deal. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Please.